gather to debate the critical national security issues regarding China or Iran? That answer would be unanimously no. We are not working for the American people. Those items would resemble the achievements of a productive Congress, a Congress that truly works for the people. But you know what this Congress counts? This Congress records is more subpoenas than laws. That's the legacy. It is not just devoid of solutions for the American people. It is now abusing its power to discredit democracy. By using secret interviews and selective leaks to portray the president's legitimate actions as an impeachable offense. Democrats are continuing their permanent campaign to undermine his legitimacy. For the last three years, they have predetermined the president's guilt. They have never accepted the voter's choice to make him president. So for 37 days and counting, they have run an unprecedented, undemocratic, and unfair investigation. This resolution today only makes it worse. I've heard members on the other side say they promise rights to the president, but only if he does what they want. That's the equivalent of saying in the First Amendment, you have the right to the freedom of speech, but you can only say the words I agree with. That's what you call due process. The amendment offered by my colleague, Mr. Cole, would help correct some of the transparency concerns we have witnessed over the last few weeks. But today is more than the fairness of an impeachment process. It is about the integrity of our electoral process. Democrats are trying to impeach the president because they are scared they cannot defeat him at the ballot box. That's not my words. That's the words of my colleagues from the other side of the aisle that has offered impeachment three different times. This impeachment is not only an attempt to undo the last election, it is an attempt to influence the next one as well. This is not what Democrats promised when they entered the majority 11 months ago. In this chamber, we heard from our speaker while we all sat here. We heard what the speaker said when she talked about words of optimism and cooperation. It was said we would work together to make America stronger, more secure, and more prosperous. We were told our mission was to return the power to the people. In fact, our new colleagues on the other side of the aisle were sent to Washington with a mandate to do just that. So what's happening? Nothing like that today. Not long ago, Democrats recognized that a partisan impeachment would put politics over people and harm our nation. That exact same speaker that talked about cooperation, that talked about and promised the American people that they would be different. They would be different if you trusted you with the majority. That speaker said he's going to show the fight to the country, and then let the suckers suck themselves and overwhelm us as bipartisan. They're going to be bipartisan. I do not think we should go down that path because it divides the country. What has changed since those words have been spoken? Hamilton wrote, there will always be the greatest danger <coughs> that the decision to use the impeachment power will be driven by partisan and animosity instead of real demonstrations of innocence or guilt. The sham impeachment by Democrats have proven Hamilton right and betrays the speaker's own words. I know emotions are high. I know members would even run for positions of chair simply on the fact that they would be a better chair for impeachment right after the election. But when we all sit back and listen to the words of the speaker of the Constitution, we all raised our hands to uphold the Constitution. It's 
tomorrow is November 1st. We're one year away from an election. Not just for this house, for the highest office of president. Why do you not trust the people? Why do you not allow the people to have a place? Why in a process that America lived in avoidance to all of us, that you deny us to speak for them? Is the animosity risen that? in a primary, but in a general election, you're elected to represent the people of America, not to deny their voice. This house is so much better than what is transforming today. I believe everyone who runs for this office runs to solve a problem. But when you go back to the American public with the achievement of more subpoenas than laws, that is not why you ran. That is not why we are here. And that's why I agree with my colleague, Mr. Cole, that believes in the power of the people, people before politics, that we believe and know we can do better. That we believe the speaker when she said about cooperation. We believed her when she said if you trusted them with the majority, they would be different. I guess it's only fitting you take this vote on Halloween. I yield back. Mem Members are directed to address their remarks to the chair. The gentleman from Oklahoma has one minute remaining. With that, Madam Speaker, I will yield back the balance. Gentleman of my yields time. back. Gentleman from Massachusetts. Uh, I yield myself the balance of the time. Gentleman's recognized. Uh, Madam Speaker, let me assure the distinguished minority leader that uh, this Democratic majority can legislate and also fulfill our constitutional responsibilities to hold this. Jim McGovern, now. the Democrat, top Democrat on the Rules Committee, making the final point from the Democratic side before we start voting, start seeing the first few votes. It's going to be a procedural vote and then the vote on this resolution formalizing the impeachment inquiry of President Trump. The Education and Labor Committee just reported out the higher ed bill. Uh, we, we passed a bill to deal with gun violence. We passed the DREAM Act. We raised the minimum wage. Uh, we, were, we were working on a bill to lower prescription drugs. We tried. We passed a bill to protect our elections so Russia doesn't interfere in our elections ever again. So, Ms., uh, so Madam Speaker, I want to say to my colleagues that I am proud of the process uh, we are following here today that brought us this resolution. You know, Ms., Madam Speaker, past Congresses under the impeachments of President Nixon and Clinton found it prudent to have a resolution in place laying out the path forward. And that is what we are doing here today. This resolution before us today is based on precedent. It includes protections for President Trump. The President's counsel is given the right to ask questions when the evidence is presented. The rules here expressly provide his counsel the chance to be invited to offer concluding, a concluding presentation. Neither of these things was, were guaranteed to President Nixon and President Clinton. And it lays out a clear path forward so that the American people know what to expect going forward. Madam Speaker, the obstruction from, uh, from this uh, White House is unprecedented. It is stunning. We don't know whether President Trump will be impeached, but the allegations are as serious as it gets, endangering national security for political gain. Madam Speaker, history is testing us. And I worry, based on what we have heard from the other side today, that some may be failing that test. 
There are no kings or, and queens in America. That is what separates this country from so many other nations. No one is above the law. Let me repeat that. No one is above the law. I urge my colleagues to support this resolution. I yield back uh, my time and I move the previous question of the resolution. Question. Question now occurs on ordering the previous question on the resolution. All in favor say aye. Opposed no. no. The opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. Madam Speaker, on that I would request the yeas and nays. The yeas and nays are requested. Those favoring a vote by the yeas and nays will rise. A sufficient number having risen, the yeas and nays are ordered. Members will record their votes by electronic device. Pursuant to Clause 9 of Rule 20, the chair will reduce to five minutes, the minimum time for any electronic vote on the question of adoption of the resolution. The chair emphasizes that this will be a 15 minute vote. This is special coverage of the House vote to formalize the impeachment inquiry. I'm Scott Detrow, along with Ron Elving and Congressional Correspondent Susan Davis. The House of Representatives has been debating for about an hour and a half on this resolution that would formalize the impeachment inquiry going forward. It'll set the rules of the road in a sense. That means it will set up public hearings uh, that the House Intelligence Committee will put together a report on its findings that will turn over to the Judiciary Committee, which will weigh whether or not to vote on articles of impeachment. This is the first House vote on impeachment, though it is not voting on articles of impeachment. Again, it's just a, a road going forward to formalize the process. Susan Davis, voting has begun, but this vote right now is not the vote on the resolution, right? No, this is a, it's called an order on the previous question. It's just a simple procedural vote that essentially says we're ready to end debate on this matter. It's another vote you can traditionally see fall very much on party line votes. Republicans will vote against it because they'll say we're not done debating this matter. Democrats are ready to move on. The next vote will be the resolution in question. 